Greetings and welcome. My name is Stan Houston. and I'm the leader of What It Takes, and we welcome you to a wit teach about, about 20 minutes to help you perform at your very best and make your mark in the world today. Our subject today is called Image is Not Everything, but it is the first thing. Facts as facts do not always create a spirit of reality, G.K. Chesterton said. Epictetus said, know first who you are and then dress accordingly. A man's style is his mind's voice, Ralph Waldo Emerson once said. Image is everything, and that's the motto. Even the mantra today of many marketers in fashion, in music, sports, certainly in entertainment, and even in politics today. So savvy marketers will tell you, and they'll tell us, that the investment in creating the image is the key to entrepreneurial and professional and business success today. Now, there are many strategies and stories, and indeed successes, that will sustain that belief. But for you, uh, there might be a small but profound difference in your life, in your business, in your service. The truth is, image is not everything, but it is the first thing. Now, let me explain. Now, there are a variety of ways to define and describe an image. Now, I use the following definition, okay? An image in personal performance marketing, that's what we're doing, image is a vivid description. It's a representation. It's even a personification of your poise, your performance, and the experience that we can provide, that we kind of project to others. You know, images are created to influence people in certainly positive and hopefully powerful ways. Now, let's examine how this works. Image is the vivid and powerful way that you represent who you are and what you do, and uh, your service performance, and the experience that you bring to the people that you seek to influence. So <laughs> you can attract clients and customers and prospects, and then you can sell them and serve them well. And, and when you seek to market your professional services, your products, your business, you must first deal with the image you want to project. The reason you must do this is that we live in a very image-conscious and media-saturated world today. A culture, television, video have not only shaped our culture, but according to some researchers, they may have even messed with our heads, rewired our brains. Today we know that people buy and vote by the sound bite and the graphic image and a constant information and noise and image overload have reduced the attention span of many people. So the, the smart and savvy marketer knows that, you know, they may only have a, get only one opportunity to connect with a prospective customer or client and uh, that that opportunity may be only for a few seconds. <sighs> Unfortunately, because of this, your first encounter with a potential client or customer is seldom one where you can uh, take time to communicate some real integrity and substance. Today, you often must begin with image and style. Now, it may not be fair, but often we have to begin our relationship with potential customers and clients based on a vivid projection of a promise to perform in a way that is different, and delightful, and memorable. Now, that is all a part of having an image. And it is the first thing you need to do if you want to market yourself and your business today. You see, we, we live in a culture where spin is in and where the sizzle may be sold as a, just as important or even more important than the proverbial steak. Now, me, as a coach, Stan Houston, I reject this. I reject these cultural and marketing standards, both personally and professionally. I believe that character is better than cute, and that substance is more important than style. 
Education is preferable to mere entertainment and integrity. Integrity must be behind and supportive of any image. So as you create your image, make sure that it is truthful as well as attractive, confident as well as humble, and exudes kindness to others and reflects well on you and what you do. You see, any business or professional service, any product based only on image will eventually, it'll eventually fail. It's only a matter of time. Got it? Now, with this understanding at the heart of all you do, let's seek to better understand why one still needs to give careful and continued attention to image as the first thing. The problem of invisibility. Years ago, Ralph Ellison wrote a classic story, wonderful book about race relations in America in the novel, The Invisible Man. And it was a story of how ignored and invisible a young black man felt as he sought to make his mark in the world. Now, few of us today can hardly compare our plight with that of a poor young black man trying to make it in the early 1950s. But the title is helpful. So in your attempt to better build your business as a financial service, insurance, but whatever it might be, you are essentially invisible. Derek Lee Armstrong and Cam Y. Yu in their book, The Persona Principle, uh, how to Succeed in Business with Image Marketing stated the problem profoundly and simply. <laughs> the biggest obstacle to your success is invisibility. You see, the best, the most experienced, the brightest, the most talented people in the world cannot enjoy real prosperity until they are visible to their potential market, to people. You know, and, and that's true for all of us. You have to deal with this issue from many sides. First of all, uh, many of us uh, have services that are kind of intangible. You know, uh, and maybe you're marketing or selling you or, or products that can be easily held or seen or smelled or experienced. Next, the best prospects for your services may also be invisible. <laughs> You know, I mean, you, might, you may not be able to know who they are and what they need and desire or the opportunity. Now, years ago, it was really fun. Every autumn, a man came to my neighborhood in Minneapolis and he knocked on my door and he offered to sell me a cord of firewood for the winter. Now, his job was easy when it comes to identifying prospects because you see in our part of the city there, homes that had fireplaces could be easily identified by a unique chimney design. So he took his truck and he simply went down the streets and he identified those homes and uh, he offered his firewood. <laughs> now, unfortunately, many of the people that you seek to serve or the people you want to buy your products and services, they're, they're not so easily identified. You, you, mean you, don't, you don't know who they are, you don't know their needs, you don't know their readiness, and they're not immediately visible. And finally, and most significantly, you yourself, you're invisible. Who's Stan Houston? Who are you? <laughs> Who do you know that might need your services that you provide? And they probably don't even know that you even exist. They don't even know what you do. And they don't even know how I can help them. Invisible, invisible, invisible. <laughs> now this is the challenge that creating an image as the first thing will help us all to overcome. Overcoming invisibility, creating your image is just one of the many ways to overcome the problems of invisibility. But there are other ways. Let's go through them. First, you can get a lucky break. <laughs> you can be in the right place at the right time. You can be there where people are looking for your services and you just happen to be available. Not only are you available, but the influence you gain from uh, the service or the product that you provide leads to other significant contacts and recommendations. You've made it a great break. Now, unfortunately, these situations are not nearly as common as we'd like to believe. Looking for the break, a breakthrough. 
Most likely what appears to be lucky breaks for some people are really the result of long and hard work. I recall an actor who said that his seemingly overnight success and fame due to his then appearance on a very successful TV sitcom. He said, it was an overnight success that took over 20 years of hard and difficult work. So don't count on the breaks. Now next, you can spend money, often significant amounts of money, to have your services proclaimed and published in public places and spaces. We call this advertising. And tons of paper is consumed and hundreds of hours of airtime are bought every day so companies and their products and their services can be seen by others. You know, they, they, they want to lose their invisibility. Now the problem with advertising as a way of you know, enhancing your visibility is that it can be very, very expensive. It is expensive. And any eventual success may not even match your costs in time, money, and energy. Third, we call it scream and shout. <laughs> now, scream and shout is kind of an industry slang for what some people call public relations, PR. Now, public relations is seeking creative ways to kind of advertise with a little greater and creative subtlety and sophistication. Now, it has the advantage over advertising in that it seeks to build relationships and to create positive experiences and demonstrate expertise and places your name and your services in, in front of perhaps some significant audiences. And it can be very effective. And it can also be very costly. Public relations might be one of the ways that uh, you make yourself more visible. However, it works best if you first have an image to show to the public. You can scream and shout, <laughs> but finally, you can be very present, very persistent, and perhaps even be a bit of a pest. <laughs> now, this is simply sales activity, and the pre premise of what we oftentimes call traditional selling is the proverbial numbers game. You know, the premise of all such selling is that if you can somehow find a way to jump in front of enough people and keep doing it, your persistent presence, or maybe just your plain pestering, will yield some results. Uh, continued selling activity will allow you to reduce your invisibility and it'll en it will enhance your public profile. Now, all of these are ways of dealing with your invisibility. But creating a simple, unique, and distinct image may be the most effective and inexpensive way to begin to be seen. So if you do decide to use any of the other ways of being visible, they will be more effective if you do them with your image in mind. So once again, image should be the first thing. Now, another reason is you already have one. <laughs> another reason why creating an image should be the first thing is that you already have one. I have one. One of the fundamental principles of communication theory is that you cannot not communicate. This means that everyone is always communicating. That's right. You're communicating something. And it may not be what you want to convey. But your presence, your body language, your words, your non-words, your haircut may say something. The same thing is true of you and your professional services, your business, your public profession. You know, it already has an image in the eyes of many people. Now let me demonstrate. When you see or hear the words uh, lawyer, CPA, dentist, minister, insurance agent, auto salesman, consultant, banker, writer, many emotions, prejudices, and images come to mind. Now, these are all based on your past experiences and your present perceptions. Yeah. 
Now, the image you have of, of these professions or the products that they have may impact any contact. Image is not everything, but it is the first thing you see. You may have many of these people. <laughs> the same is true for you. You have an image. And one of the reasons you need to do your image work first is to, first of all, play on the positive images that people already have of you or the work or your business, and to then differentiate yourself from the images that people have that are maybe negative or rather ordinary or mundane or boring. You see, one of the fundamental principles of sales and marketing and business is seek to be different from the competition. Show the differences and the uniqueness that you possess. Now, since your profession and your business and your products have an image of some kind, the first thing you need to do is create an image that highlights you and your unique abilities. An image is an inexpensive way to start. Now, the third reason why you should do your image first is because it is one of the least expensive things you can do as part of a personal performance marketing program. A now legendary story in marketing is true. It tells how the famous Nike image of the swoosh was created by a design student for just a few dollars. <laughs> what Nike got in that simple image creation is incredible. Kind of like the legend of acquiring Manhattan Island for $24. The story demonstrates that a simple, attractive image need not be a costly venture. Now, of course, good design is of great value and good graphic design can, can be quite expensive. But part of the genius of good image work is that you can have high impact with a minimal investment. Part of the genius of good image work is that you can have high impact with minimal investment. Image, the most important thing. Now, the final reason why image is the first thing is that it helps you do the most important thing. Got this now? That is, be the client, think like the client, and serve the needs of the client. You see, it is very easy to get caught up. It happens all the time. You're enthusiastic about your work, what you do, the services, your products. You just love this stuff. And the hopes that you have for, for making a difference, for helping others. But the best thing you can do is creating your business and marketing is to forget about you and to literally see it as the client would see it, the customer would see it. So when you create an image, you must decide who the prospective client or customer is and what is it they want. You'll have to try and figure out what will grab their attention, what will keep them interested. And you'll have to find ways to demonstrate to them your expertise. And then you have to influence them to seek you out to find your product. Image creation is communication to the client. Now, and by giving it a strong priority in the work you do, you begin to think less of yourself and more about the clients and customers whom you hope to have an impact with your image on. Now, in my experience, I have found that many people you know, still lack the empathy and the ability to put themselves fully in the place of a client or customer. Now, when you create an image, knowing that it is to be seen and perceived and heard and felt by the client and customer, you are doing the key work of identifying the people in your market and the services and the products and experiences that you will provide and the positive results people can enjoy because they work with you. Now, if you do not take image creation seriously, you are not taking your marketing seriously. If you do not take image creation seriously, 
you are not taking your marketing seriously. Now, how you can begin. How, can you, how do you begin to create an image is not an easy project. And you'll benefit by getting a coach or, or an advisor with some strong communications and performance and mass media experience to help you. It is deeply personal work. Now, as you work through this whole exercise and you define your market, your interests, your expertise, and the stories and values that you shape you and your practice and your business and your, your ideas will come to you. You'll begin to seek and receive advice and wisdom in these three image areas. First of all, your personal communication, leadership style, and care for others. Your personal presence, your poise, your appearance, and attractiveness to others. Your printed material, including business cards, stationery, and brochures. But to get you started, let me suggest some uh, practices and principles that you can consider and use to enhance your personal style and your professional image. One of the best ways to build your image is to gain a reputation, not just for your persona and fine appearance, but the poise, graciousness, and good manners you possess. Now, the following are some suggestions to help you create not only an image, but become a person of grace and good manners. Number one. Do what you say you will do. This is very simple, and perhaps it seems too obvious. However, it is one of the best things you can do, and so many people don't do it, and it is one of the rare qualities found in the business world today. When you make a promise, keep it. When you say you will do something by a certain time, have it done by that time, or get back to the person with an explanation and, and seek to reopen the negotiation. Make this part of your image, building vital to all that you do. Whenever you say you will do something, make sure you do it. Number two, be very present. Personal presence is one of the most powerful ways of building your image and increasing your influence. As one coach said in advising people on what they should do with their clients, he said, be prepared to show up and be no place else. You can have incredible influence and power by being totally focused on the person that you are working with person you're helping, and listening. Oftentimes, uh, many businesses, we have people who talk about themselves, and they're always looking around, interrupting others with their own opinions, and they seek to be in the center of attention. They're networking. Now, you may want to get coaching to help you develop this powerful personal quality of being very present. If you view every social encounter as an opportunity to be fully present and fully aware of the other person, you'll be known for the quality of your listening and the quality of your performance. Number three, always say thank you. A number of years ago, a man named Robert Fulgham suggested that most of the things necessary for personal and professional success were <laughs> learned in kindergarten. <laughs> now, I would say I should have been learned in kindergarten. <laughs> I'm often surprised by how many people still do not know how to say please and thank you. <laughs> it's incredible. When someone does something for them, they forget to say, thank you. When someone has helped them or in some way recommended them, 
they forget to write a thank you note. Be different and remember that to live well and be successful today, you need to have an attitude of ongoing gratitude. Be grateful to God for the gift of life and the prosperity you have. Be grateful to others for their sustaining care and concern for you. Be grateful to clients who, by their patronage of your service you know, and their recommendations to others, are vital to your success. Always say thank you. Number four, apologize when you are wrong and even when you're not. Gain a reputation for never blaming others or defending yourself. If a mistake was made, apologize. Say you're sorry and ask for forgiveness. Make every assurance that you can, that the mistake will not be repeated. If someone else makes a mistake, do not blame them or seek to find a way to place blame. Nothing positive is achieved because somebody was able to push the blame to somebody else. What difference does it make in future success? When you have the humility to admit when you are wrong, say you are sorry and ask for forgiveness, you will increasingly find that people are attracted to you by the poise that you show and the kindness that you share. Number five, stand up and greet people by their name. Now, it may sound, I'm old fashioned. I am old fashioned today, but I suggest that it is even more relevant today. When you are at a table, or a desk, and uh, someone comes to you, stand up and greet them. Use their name whenever you can. Now, don't get me wrong, I know the trick. The excessive use of another person's name is an old, old salesperson's trick. You know, and such sophistry and sham behavior can easily be spotted. I'm simply suggesting that when you know a person's name, that you demonstrate the importance of their name and show the importance of their person by your manner of greeting them. In Asian societies, a simple bow, you've seen that, acknowledges to the other that a source and spark of divinity is to be found in the other. When you stand for another person, you simply assert that no matter what, you find dignity in the person that you are meeting. So whenever it is appropriate, learn to use a person's name as you stand up. Don't interrupt. <laughs> we see it and hear it. I do it and perhaps suffer through it all the time. My wife is always after me. One person is asking a question or making a statement and another cuts them off or quickly or worse, uh, interrupts. Don't interrupt. Try and be conscious of that. Don't interrupt others. Cultivate a habit of the pregnant pause. After a person has finished their statement or asked a question, give a pause to think, to reflect, to show respect, and then make your point. Now, this does not mean that you, you have to accept everything they say or that you believe every proposition that they make. It simply allows civility to come back to your conversation and, and gives a sense of peace and quiet, which we all need in our social interactions and allows you the full power of making an uninterrupted statement yourself. A reputation for pausing and then speaking will profoundly enhance your personal communication image. Give simple gifts. Gain a reputation for giving simple gifts in your business and in your personal 
and professional life. Learn the art of the simple gift. When a client has done business with you or recommended you to others, it is appropriate to find a suitable, simple gift that says, I value your recommendation and thank you. Now, it should not say too little, you know, all those trinkets and trash stuff with uh, advertising. No, not that. Nor should it say too much, as if some reciprocation and more recommendations are to be expected. It simply says the right stuff. Gain the grace of giving simple gifts. Give away your stuff. This is a corollary to our past recommendation, but it goes further and has even greater implications. Now, the so-called new economy changes many things in the marketing equations. And one of the things that is increasingly true about the new economy, the one we're in now, is that we can gain power and influence by not hoarding all of the things we have. Our influence will grow and our image will be enhanced when we are not so protective of our possessions, our talents, and information. One very successful author has given people the choice of buying his book or downloading the whole thing from the internet. Many others will follow him. Now, these writers know that by sometimes showing an attitude that lacks greed, lacks fear, and demonstrates an ability to share, that in the end, they will be far better off, both in reputation and in revenue. So as you cultivate your image, find ways for you to give away your good stuff from time to time. Number nine. Treat others as the most important people in the world. Did you get that? It is an incredibly powerful and simple as it can be. Earl Nightingale, one of the foremost thinkers and one of my mentors in the area of personal and professional success, said many years ago that the key to success is to treat every person as if they were the most important person in the world. Think how much better you would feel and how much better it would go for you if you would do this. Now, the stories of salespeople and others who have lost millions of dollars in sales because they treated uh, secretaries and uh, assistants as second-class citizens are legion. It is vital that you gain a reputation of treating other people as if they were the most important person in the world. We do this because they truly are. Be you, only more so. Now, one of the problems is that people are learning all kinds of image enhancing and success strategies today that teach you to fool other people into believing that you are more than you are. <laughs> Unfortunately, some people, rather than trying to be better at what they do, try to cover up who they are with a uh, mask of exaggerated importance. They are more ego than value or experience. Take the time with a coach or someone who cares deeply for you to do the work of discovering who you really are. What is the role that you are called to play in the dream and drama of life? What are the secrets of your personal success and your own performance that reside powerfully and deeply within you? You are not here to try to be something. You are not. You are not here to cover up your weaknesses. You are here to perform at your very best, to develop your strengths and find others to help you with the things that you cannot do. Nothing will put a, a person more at ease than to find a person who is confident in who they are, creating value based on who they are, 
and careful to include others in any project of significance and success. Remember, who you are and how you care for others will ultimately be the key to the image that follows you in any work you do. Now that you have the image and style idea in hand, let's make sure that you are becoming the person who is attractive because you know what you want uh, out of life. You know, and uh, that's going to be one of our next activities. But now you know. This is how you start to do the image work in building the image that will make a difference. May it go well for you as you seek not only to be a person of great value, but have the quality and the ability to project that image to others so that your influence and your impact and your integrity and your income will grow. I'm Stan Houston. For what it takes, I wish you all the best and blessings. Until our next time, bye for now.